Hey, on today's edition of The Final Bar, my guest is Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician, a familiar name to many of you. He's going to be talking about his take on the overall markets, particularly in the commodity space, global markets. Uh, let us know what he's thinking about the overall uh, direction of things. We're also going to break down some stocks in the consumer sector as part of the shifting stocks segment. Look at some of the names on the move. A lot of breakouts, also some breakdowns to be uh, familiar with. So ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. <music> everyone, welcome to today's edition of The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington. Thanks so much for joining us today every weekday as we rack up, wrap up today's uh, trading activity. Think about the short-term movements of the day, but connect it to the longer-term trends. And I think that's one of the real values of technical analysis is being able to put things into proper context. A lot of times we get very caught up in the short-term movements during the day, the headline risk, uh, all the earnings, all the fluctuations. We forget to have a proper long-term perspective, and I think that's where charts can really add a ton of value to your process. Hopefully, the fact that you're here listening to me to describe that means at least you've taken that crucial first step of recognizing the value of technical analysis. What I hope to do with this show is hope to illuminate some of the other, uh, some of the other ways you can use uh, this discipline. We have a really interesting show. Uh, Greg Schnell is going to be joining me uh, a little later in the, in the show here. Uh, he's the Canadian technician, uh, fellow StockCharts.com uh, contributor. Uh, talking about his big picture uh, view of the markets, focus on commodities, which would be really, really interesting to, uh, to hear. Also, a segment called Shifting Stocks. We're going to talk about some of the fluctuations in the consumer space, how to think of those uh, equity-wise. Before we get to that, though, I did want to share with you some of the upcoming uh, shows we have coming uh, in the next couple weeks. There's a lot of really good content coming up on Stock Charts TV and on this show. Uh, tomorrow, we have Greg Harmon from uh, uh, from the Cleveland area joining us, a uh, fantastic technical analyst, educator. be really interesting to see some of the names that he's looking at. We also are going to be unveiling our 2020 market outlook. That is me, Greg, a number of other uh, stock charts contributors sharing our take on, on where we see the markets headed this year. You're not going to want to miss that. Next week on the 27th, we have Mark Ungewitter. On, the, on January 28th, we have Dana Lyons. And then on January 29th, our interview, our documentary-style interview with Ralph Eckenpora called 50 Years on Wall Street. It's really, really fantastic uh, event to, uh, to pay attention to. Before we get to our market recap, we're going to share with you the results of a poll. As you probably know, we have polls running on Stock Charts TV on the page all the time. We had uh, over 800 of you, almost 900 of you respond um, to this question. It was, which asset class do you think will perform the best through year-end 2020? Just over half of you, 53% responded U.S. stocks in the form of the spiders. 25% of you said gold. 18% said IFA, a global stocks. And 4% of you said bonds. So it's a really interesting uh, response here. I'm not super surprised by the layout. I'm actually surprised that gold had that much of a nod. One in four of you uh, saying gold was the, uh, was the place to be through, uh, through year end. You know, 50% of you said stocks, and again, based on where they're at right now, it's hard to deny that that's a position of strength. Makes a ton of sense. But as you've probably seen, when I brought up my charts of gold, out of all the charts out there, in terms of big setups for long-term upside, I think uh, gold is a compelling one. If I had to answer this, I probably would have put my vote into the GLD, to be completely honest with you. What's also interesting is only 4% of you responded with bonds, and I am always looking for a potential pain trade, a potential trade that I think people are unprepared for or uh, not ready to accept that they will have a period of disbelief when it starts to emerge, because that's when big wins tend to happen. So it'll be interesting to, uh, to see how things evolve. Thanks so much, everyone, for responding to the polls. I'd encourage you when you're watching Stock Charts TV, see what polls are on there anytime during the day and uh, respond to them. We'll, we'll bring a, surface them on the show as, uh, as much as we can. So let's recap today's uh, trading and our market recap, just sort of see how things played out a little more of a digestion day is what I would call this. Uh, you know, I, I, I sort of 
My shorthand of calling something a digestion day is not really a huge downside move, but more of a pause that refreshes during a longer uptrend. We can see just looking at today's trading on the S&P pretty choppy, so we sort of sold off out of the open, came right back up to the, uh, to the close from yesterday, but then came right back down, tested the lows around two, closed more on the weaker side of that, more at the bottom. It's really more of a range-bound move from 33.17 to 33.30. Um, overall, the market closed down, S&P down uh, just over a quarter of a percent. The NASDAQ down a little bit less than that. We've talked a lot about small versus mid versus large. Small cap stocks down the most, almost 1%. Mid cap down 0.6%. Again, the S&P down the least. So we continue to have this um, theme that we've had for a while about uh, overall about large and mega cap leadership relative to small and mid. So it'll be interesting to see how that sort of uh, plays out. On the sector side, interesting to see real estate, utilities, consumer staples, one, two, three. It's why it feels like a sort of a corrective day. You have the defense sort of at the top of the list um, today, we're going to look at uh, Hershey's a little later as part of our shifting stock segments in the in the consumer staples space. So some interesting charts within there, but uh, but overall, it's been a difficult place to be. Different from real estate and utilities, which have actually been in, in quite a position of strength. If you look at the chart of the XLRE, it's actually testing new highs, if not new closing highs today. It looks like it just uh, tested the 40 handle, which would be a new uh, closing high for the XLRE. That's actually a pretty decent up move. And utilities also in a position of strength, sort of in this in slow and steady uptrend. So while the market has felt like it's been offense on and things like tech have certainly been leadership, you also have things like real estate and utilities at or, or well beyond uh, you know, previous highs, which tells you there's money to be made on the defensive side of the ledger as well. On the downside, we continue to see energy in a position of weakness, continuing to break down regardless of it feels like what the broader market has done. But we also have the rest of the MEI trade here at the bottom. Materials down, Freeport McMoran, I was talking with uh, Greg Schnell before the show started, FCX down uh, pretty good today, 4 to 5%, industrials down as well. And then financials, and financials are a tough one because you know, part of, I think, that offense story, that, um, you know, emerging leadership story, something like financials that starts to really do well over time. And today was more of a digestion, seeing it come, uh, come down a little bit. Um, so a lot of things happening in terms of individual stocks. When we get to our shifting stock segments, we're going to talk a little bit about more some of the stocks that have been on the move. But I'd remind you all, uh, you know, big earnings weeks. We have airlines, uh, you know, a lot of different types of companies reporting um, last week, this week, next week. So make sure you follow which stocks are coming out there. Pay attention to the charts. It's interesting to see things like Dr. Horton on the on the uh, scooter gainers list. Uh, home builders has actually been a space that's been pretty positive. A lot of the home builders names sort of coming uh, coming out of uh, of nice digestions of uh, of previous up moves, which is uh, which is pretty good. In terms of the rest of uh, wrapping up our market recap here on the global side, only a couple of the global equity ETFs that we regularly follow are up on the day. Switzerland and Canada in particular. Frontier markets would be the third in terms of overall performance. But on the downside, you have quite a few. A lot of these obviously um, related to China. We've got the, you know, the um, uh, viral outbreak that's uh, that's been hitting a lot of headlines that that's certainly causing some causing some a uh, little bit of a panic in terms of what what uh, what this would impact in terms of Chinese markets and uh, and economic forces but uh, we certainly see those at the bottom of the list in terms of industries on the move interesting to note automobiles at the top we've had automobiles doing pretty well Tesla's in, in a pretty good position of strength I think it was in uh, Barron's had a, a good discussion of uh, of uh, Tesla and sort of that. Uh, sort of consistent uptrend. So, so a nice chart there. A lot of consumer at the top here with food retailers, home construction. These are the home builders we've talked about. But then look at how it's a bunch of utilities and real estate actually at the top of the list um, compared to uh, to previous days where we've not had uh, quite so much of that at the uh, at the top of the returns for the day. On the downside, gambling names actually come back. Uh, LVS caught my eye here on the new on the scooter losers list today, and you have the gambling industry group coming off pretty heavily today. Um, so it might be interesting to watch. LVS actually gapped down today, uh, closed just above 70, but that's a big jump down from 74 where it was yesterday. And this is what is a challenge with a lot of equities. You know, Wells Wilder, who created RSI and DMI, parabolic systems, technical indicators that many of you are familiar with, in his initial book, if I remember right, talking about uh, trading systems where he, where he uh, you know, released RSI to the world. He talked about why commodities are so much easier than equities because you don't have all the headline risk, you don't have the earnings that cause these quick shocks. And Las Vegas Sands, as of Friday, looked 
pretty decent new price high, new closing high overbought, but then gap down today, sort of a, a very different profile. So anytime there's a big gap down like this, it's not too much of a worry, right? So now we're sort of testing the previous low. It found support just below 69, which is where uh, it bottomed out at the end of last year and also the, the first week of this year. So as long as we hold sort of that 68, 50, 69 level, it's holding up okay and remains in an uptrend of higher highs and higher lows. You want to be concerned about charts that are breaking down through uh, some of those support levels. That's kind of what you want to be want to be paying attention to on something like uh, LVS. So that's our market recap for today. I want to move right into our next segment called Shifting Stocks. Um, what I love to do with uh, with this segment is just look at some of the names that I think are, are fluctuating. Um, there are a lot of movements, and part of my routine, if, uh, if you've heard me talk about it before, is every weekend go through all the S&P 500 charts. So going through individual uh, charts by sector, so I'll look at all the communication services, all consumer discretionary, consumer staples, energy, kind of go right down the list alphabetically by sector, and then I go through each of the groups within there, look at the individual charts. And it takes a little bit of time, but all sorts of things come out of, uh, you know, conclusions can come out of that process. So if you don't have a time when you regularly go through a number of individual charts, it's a great uh, idea to set up a chart list of some of the larger names, maybe just the OEX members, the S&P 100 members, and, and go through them one by one. Just see what jumps out at you. See what's breaking out, what's breaking down. And it's a great way to sort of learn over time what's, uh, how things are moving. Let's start with the Home Builders chart. This is the XHB. There are a couple ETFs that people tend to follow. This is the XHB that I'm looking at, which is the Spiders uh, Home Builders uh, group. And this is why it's such a compelling chart as a broad group, right? You have this nice run up. In the fall, going into October, November, you hit a resistance level about 46.50 on the XHB. Comes off a little bit to the 50-day at the end of last year, but then a nice move right back above resistance. Once again, making new highs. Uh, and, and again, the, the challenge now, or I guess the opportunity, is the fact that the RSI is pretty elevated. So you have a lot of these things with the RSI has, has, has reached that extreme overbought reading, an RSI above 80. And I'd be looking for that here to see if it becomes extremely overbought, because what that tends to mean is you'd have a little bit of a pullback, but overall the momentum's so positive, we'll probably have at least one more move higher. What's interesting about the chart of the XSB is HSP is not just the move higher in price, but it's also the improvement in the relative strength. So this is a group that had been underperforming in November and December. You see the relative strength line sloping downwards, and look at how that's just started to round uh, to the upside year to date. So year to date, it's been up pretty good, a couple percent relative to the S&P 500, broken above a trend line if you connect the peaks from October and December. So if we continue to see an improvement in the relative strength, especially if the market sort of uh, holds off a little bit or pulls back a little bit, could be a really interesting group to uh, to pay attention to. And within that group, you have, you have a lot of little, uh, a lot of different names, but uh, DR Horton comes to mind as one that's improved very, very nicely. So this is up over 2% today on a day that was down a little bit. You can see it's just touching the overbought region, so a little uh, less elevated than the XHB, but I love how it's just broken above this previous resistance. 56 was sort of the level. We pulled back down. Now we're breaking above that 56, uh, 56 level up to 57 today. So what you want to do in this sort of environment, we've put in a higher low, which is encouraging. You want to continue that pattern, hopefully, of higher highs, higher lows. If the overbought condition plays out and we pull back, look for support around the 50-day, look for a higher low, and that could be an opportunity to ride it to the next leg uh, higher. But there are a number of stocks within that home builder group that might be worth uh, looking at. Things like uh, Lennar Homes uh, comes to mind as well, LEN, so similar type of thing. A lot of these had a nice run, um, pulled back a little bit, underperformed in the fall, but you can see year to date, look at how the performance on a relative basis has just turned on a dime. So LEN has outperformed the S&P by about what, 14, 13, 14% year to date just in the first couple weeks of the year. So a lot of strength, a lot of uh, flows going into those names. I wanna just go through some of the other charts that caught my eye going through the consumer space as part of my normally normal weekly routine. Again, every weekend I try to go through all those names. Activision jumped off the page of me. This is not a consumer, sorry, it was at the beginning of my list in communication services, but I love this parity. And, and when I talk about parity, that's where you have a resistance level that becomes support. It's a, sort of a traditional uh, technical phenomenon. It's something you're taught when you're learning the technical toolkit, but it's this sort of pattern. We have a run up into resistance. You pull back, you finally break above the resistance level here in December, and then look how we pull back and that resistance from last September becomes support in the first week of the year. And that's sort of the launch pad to higher highs higher lows, and that's what we've seen since then. So sort of an interesting chart with Activision um, 
you know, a nice, uh, nice breakout above a previous resistance level, which became support, setting up in a strong position on a relative basis has not really gotten you much. But again, if, it, if the chart holds up like that, I think it's going to look pretty attractive relative to some of the other uh, charts that feel a little more corrective here. Within auto parts, this is getting into the consumer space. In terms of things that feel not as attractive, you know, something like AAP comes to mind. I'm often asked, you know, what are what would you consider a short idea? It's so easy when you're looking at a lot of charts to be thinking only on the long side, thinking for the next home run that you can swing at. Um, but I think a lot there's a lot of money to be made just on the risk management side and getting out of names that are starting to hurt your performance. That's where I think something like AAP might come into play. So instead of something like Activision or the home builders, which are making higher highs, higher lows, maybe some of the airlines before they pull back, this one you actually have the opposite. You have a pattern of lower lows, lower highs. So you had this gap down in November. The next swing up didn't get anywhere near the previous high, just above 170. We then had a lower low first week in December, a lower high fails at the 50 day. And now we've continued this pattern of lower lows and lower highs. And just like I always bang away at higher highs and higher lows is an uptrend. This is the opposite. We have lower lows, lower highs. This is what downtrends are made of. And until that pattern is broken, until you establish a higher low, which tells you there's some sort of accumulation, some sort of buying pressure that is causing the price to bottom out at a higher level, then the trend by definition remains uh, lower. So something like this, I think it's worth you know, holding off on, you can see the relative strength pretty weak as well until you see some sign of, uh, of accumulation there. It hasn't happened yet. Hotels are actually some interesting charts. Marriott and some others, uh, similar to the gambling names, have sort of rolled over, broken down through support. So sort of earlier on the chart of AAP, where you had a nice run, but then you have a, a, a low, you have a lower high. We have now established a lower low. What's interesting about this, why I think it's kind of an actionable chart, is we're right now to the 50-day moving average. So one of two things happens. Either this breakdown below the previous support level around 145 uh, is confirmed. We continue to break down through the 50-day. That would sort of confirm this negative uh, sort of bearish cautionary thesis that it's now in a downtrend. Or this is just an initial sell-off. We see accumulation at the 50-day. We see the, the support here sort of hold. We don't get any confirmation lower. And this sort of uh, rides higher. This is a pause, a bear flag, if, or I'm sorry, a bull flag, if you will, a nice run before sort of a parallel downward correction. One of those two things is going to happen, but I think it's a really uh, interesting time, uh, actionable to look at that chart of, uh, of Marriott, M-A-R. Um, next one is Royal Caribbean RCL, similar to the Marriott chart, but a little different in that we haven't really established a lower high yet. We sort of have this widening, this broadening pattern of higher highs, if not a stable resistance level, and lower lows. So it pulled down today, but closed back up right at support. So it'll be interesting to see if we follow through to the downside or if this is holding okay. But a lot of these names in, in similar spaces, hotels, sort of this um, travel group is what I would call you, down, down pretty good. So uh, RCL down 4% on a day that was, uh, that, was a lot, um, that was a lot lighter. And then finally, just one Staples name that I thought was interesting was uh, Hershey's. This is sort of a, a, a compelling potential reversal here. So you had this nice run. You have this pattern of lower highs, lower lows, that appears to have been abated. You had this higher low at the end of last year into the first week of the trading year. Now we're breaking above the previous resistance level, just starting to emerge. It'll be interesting to see if the relative strength can improve from here, if you start to get some improvement on the relative basis of this, uh, of this chart. So that segment, Shifting Stocks, is really just trying to identify some of the stocks on the move. And hopefully you've caught some of the stocks, I think, making some nice interim highs, things like Hershey's, but also things starting to weaken, things like uh, Advanced Auto Parts, things like Marriott, RCL, that might be worth uh, holding off on just a bit. We're going to take a brief commercial break. We're going to be back with my guest, Greg Schnell. We'll see you in a minute. The Chart Watchers newsletter features expert technical commentary about the current market from some of the industry's leading technical analysts. See what's really happening in the markets through their eyes and gain an edge in your own investing. The newsletter is packed full of insightful and educational articles intended to help you become a better investor. Whether you are brand new to charting or a seasoned technical analyst, each edition will provide a wealth of informative content. It's the best way to stay informed on all the latest news, events, updates, and additions here at StockCharts.com. Whether it's a new feature or blog, an upcoming conference, or a special sale, you'll hear it first in the Chart Watchers newsletter. 
to the show. Thanks for joining me every weekday after the close here on the, uh, the final bar to wrap up today's trading uh, action. Think about the long-term trends. My guest today is Greg Schnell, who's a name and a face that's probably familiar to many of you, a Stock Charts TV and Stock Charts contributor for a number of years. Really excited to have you on. Uh, Greg, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me in. Absolutely. So you sent a couple charts ahead of time, which I appreciate. And the first one is, is one of those indexes that I find people don't pay as much attention to as they probably should, which is the Baltic Dry Index. Sort of gives a window into, into shipping and how things are evolving. What are you seeing on this first chart? Well, the one thing about the Baltic Dry, I find it doesn't help to be very micro on it. You're much better to zoom out to a larger picture yearly or weekly. This is a weekly chart, but but obviously showing 15 years there. So the one thing that I like about the Baltic Dry, you can see it roughly correlates with the XME, which is the Metals and Mining ETF. Um, and, and on this chart, what you'll see is typically, if you go back to 2011, you'll see that that chart was breaking down as the, the Metals and Mining ETF rolled over at the top of 2011. And so you had this big divergence there. And we have that same sort of situation now where the Metals and Mining ETF is still holding up but in the meantime, the Baltic Dry Index has plummeted away from it. And so I'm starting to wonder if, um, if we're going to experience the big breakout that we want to see in metals and mining. And, and China is one of the biggest users of metals and mining. So what I want to see out of this chart is I want to see this Baltic Dry Index start to turn back up. That would be good for iron ore. That would be good for coal, for copper, for all of the things regarding industrial manufacturing. And so this this... Baltic Dry Index being this week right here and trying to hold this four-year trend line on commodities is a pretty important place. Um, 2016 was the commodity low. So we're looking for this chart to bounce off this particular level, the, the Baltic Dry Index. But more importantly, we want to see, uh, we want to make sure that the metals and mining ETF holds up because much like Dave mentioned, um, that chart from 2018 to now still has a downtrend. And we've tried to make a slightly higher high here over the July high in the red there. But if this is going to start to break down this metals and mining ETF, that would be very cautionary for us. It's a really, really good chart. And I love the long-term take on it, Greg. Uh, the second chart that you send was related to, to China. Obviously, all eyes on China with news coming out with the trade negotiations, et cetera, et cetera. This is another, you know, a good long-term view of this space. What is the, the Shanghai index? What are you seeing here? The one thing that I like on the Shanghai is obviously there's two sides to the biggest trade deal going on, uh, the largest uh, market and the second largest market. So we want to see this chart um, take off much like the S&P 500 has. And what we see is for the last three or four weeks, it's migrated sideways. And once we get today's close, we're going to end up right at the black line, the 3050 line. And now the the virus would obviously add pressure to this chart and maybe not help us with the underlying but what we want to know is does this chart have enough momentum to actually break this two-year downtrend and this trend started down in 2018 when the talk of tariffs first started and most of the metals charts also have a top in there right around the top of 2018 january so we're trying to see if all of this can merge out of this together and get that global growth that we talk about started again Obviously, as we're nearing the end of this pennant, that's a, a pretty close place. And we don't have a lot of momentum on the PPO. We're very close to zero. Looking left on the chart, when that goes below zero, that would be a problem. So we want to make sure that we, we stay in positive momentum. So it's, it's, uh, we, we don't have clear, uh, a clear answer yet out of the trade deal as to which way this chart wants to break. It was a really, really good point. So I think at the very top, the relative performance of Shanghai versus the S&P, that's a, you know, obviously another part of the story is just thinking about what it means for you know, North American-based investors. Now, what's interesting about this last chart that you sent about copper, you know, people love to think about Dr. Copper and implications for broader market health. And when you're thinking about China, obviously the you know, base metals become sort of important. What are you seeing here? Yeah, we'll notice that the chart tops out in the January of 2018, and shortly after that, we had the tariff talks, and so we've been gently sliding lower, 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 um, you know, roughly down about 25 or 30 percent off the highs. But the the main thing that I 
like to focus on with the PPO at the bottom is when we roll over near zero, um, this is an important place on the chart to be aware of. So we want to see this chart start to accelerate higher, much like it did in November 2016. And we're just not seeing that yet. So it doesn't mean it won't happen. But we have five weeks or four weeks now of the histogram being slightly lower. And so we want to start watching this chart for momentum to the upside. And that would really help me understand that we're going to get this global reflation that we're trying to get and the global inflation we're trying to get to get um, all of the, the emerging markets moving forward. So this is a pretty important chart because everything's very tentative, just barely above zero. The steel chart, the uh, oil chart, the uh, Shanghai composite chart, lots of them are just barely above zero. So this would be a place to watch for acceleration or failure. And, and we're right on those trend lines now. Greg, those are three fantastic charts. Thank you so, so much for coming on, sharing your take on the world. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks for having me. Good luck, everybody. Bye-bye. Folks, that was Greg Schnell. Three interesting charts. You can catch him Wednesdays and Fridays, 10.30 a.m. here on Stock Charts TV with his, uh, his own show, which is a must-watch in my opinion. We, however, need to move on very quickly to a new segment called The Two-Minute Drill. One of the things I talked about with the producers was taking a stock and having a two-minute window to try and pitch uh, why it's an interesting chart to pay attention to, and I'm going to give it a shot right now with Target, TGT. So here we go. The idea was something like Target, as I think it has been in a position of strength, and I love the chart from 2019 showing this pattern of higher highs, higher lows. You can see these gaps all have resolved to the upside. It's been a continued up move in the stock, which is pretty compelling. The challenge, however, is just most recently where that pattern has started to reverse. And now you have, instead of higher highs and higher lows, you've had arguably the first lower high, but definitely the first lower low, breaking below the 50-day in a meaningful way, and now following through it. Anytime you have a big gap down, it's always interesting to know where the, the move goes afterwards. Where's the momentum? Do we digest that gap or do we continue downwards or, or continue in the direction? And so far, we have continued downwards. So overall, this is a, a chart that has looked attractive that I think is starting to look a little weaker than it had been. Uh, on a relative basis, what concerns me is the fact that the relative strength is just making a new three to four month low, breaking below the relative lows from November. Also, we can see the first Fibonacci support level around 103, 104. If and when we would continue lower to that level, that would line up support from the beginning of October. That would line up with uh, the, uh, the RSI oversold condition, assuming we continue those uh, patterns down to here. So overall, um, you know, target looking a little, uh, little weaker here relative, th relative than stronger. One of the charts I love to look at, though, when I'm thinking about target is Gaddis Rose's chart. If you're not familiar with this, in the, um, in the uh, chart styles, you have Gaddis's chart that's all ready. If you look here, it is negative across the board because the group is underperforming the sector, the sector is underperforming the market, and target the stock is underperforming its group. So top to bottom, weaker rather than stronger. Folks, that was less than two minutes because we need to finish up the show. This is the three and three. At the end of the charts, three charts in three minutes. This may be one minute, but we're going to get through it, folks. The first one is the S&P with new highs and new lows. When I first saw this this morning as part of my normal morning coffee routine, I saw this spiking higher. This is how last week looked, but until you locked in Friday's new highs, it didn't look quite as extreme. Look at how many new highs you've had on the S&P 500, way more than you've had for the last uh, you know, eight or nine months. And I'd have to back up the chart much further to see when we've gotten that high before. Before you think that is a huge negative sign, though, I would say don't worry too much about it because in an extended up move, that can become elevated and go much higher than you might expect. The second one is real estate. We have sectors like real estate and utilities breaking to new highs. If not established new highs, the relative strength just starting to turn up. If that improves, that tells you to hold off a little bit on the accelerator in terms of the broad market environment because defense is starting to work. And number three is the Home Builders Index. We looked at the XHB earlier as part of the shift stock segment. It's a group that I think has emerged really, really nicely, broken out of resistance at a time when other stocks are starting to struggle. You can see it's becoming overbought, up, up to the extreme overbought uh, region, and also on a relative basis, really starting to improve. And I love the fact that the relative strength line is breaking above trend line resistance if you line up uh, those points. So folks, that was a quick motor through three and three. And that is our show for today on a Tuesday 
uh, afternoon here in Redmond, Washington. Thanks so much for joining us every weekday here on The Final Bar. You can get all of our previous videos on our YouTube channel, so check it out there. Also want to remind you, uh, thanks to our guest, Greg Schnell, uh, you can get his show Wednesdays and Fridays, 1030 a.m. here on Stock Charts TV. For Stock Charts in Redmond, Washington, I want to wish everyone a very good evening. Good night. Thanks so much. Thank you.